Well, hello everyone. It is January the 6th, 2023. I am Dale Delbridge, Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. This is your status chat. Before we go too far into it, being the first of the year, I do hope you had a happy and stress-free Christmas and a safe new year. Also, if you have a Hanukkah or some other holiday in your, your particular life, I hope those two were good for you. So today, trying to be just a little bit different, something came up that I thought might be of value for you to discuss, is residential switches. So what do you say we get to that right now? If you like this content, please go to calldelltosell.com, find the tab that says on YouTube, click it, and it'll open up a page of QR codes. There you can use a smartphone to scan and get to the YouTube page, or you can just mouse over and click it on a PC. There you'll be able to subscribe to this little button over here and click the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you when each Friday's blog has been uploaded. Thank you. Well, here we have a diagram, a pictogram, so to speak. It's not really a wiring diagram, and it's not really much of anything, but it'll give us what we need to look at. Now, over here on this part, we have the A and the B, and these are two basic ways switches are typically wired in a residential type of home. We have A, which is my preferable way I do it. I prefer to do this, where I bring the power into the switch box, and just break the power leg, the uh, black wire, into the circuit itself. And I like to feed it in at the bottom. Even if I have to loop it from the top, I bring it back in there just as a convention, just to help remind me. Not everybody does that, and you can't count on it. It would also be stapled to the stud pretty close to or within four inches of the box itself. Anyway, this is how we would typically see so many of the switches done. Switch, and it's just breaking the one wire, the hot wire, go into the circuit. Another way, we might call this a drop loop, a light loop, a drop leg, any number of type of things where we're dropping a leg down here to be controlled and then we have the circuit, the main power rolling through the light box. Now I don't particularly like this as much because I have a hot wire in this box and when I flip the switch off, assuming all this is covered up with sheetrock and I can't see it and I don't pull the switch, if I sw just switch it off I might think that I don't have power in the box and get myself a little tingle. So I don't know that this is my my personal preference how to wire a house, but sometimes uh, because of cost of copper wiring and, and everything that this might be better and easier to do. Maybe we just run all the wires to the second floor through the floor ceiling and the wires to the first floor uh, through the ceiling and drop down and hit them. There's a different reason we might want to do this. This is not necessarily illegal. I've heard lots of people tell me, oh, you can't do that. I don't know of any prohibitive feature in the National Electric Code that would prohibit that, but there are some, some issues that we have. Now, I'm assuming that, that the average person watching is not an electrician, and they may not be a super expert on all this stuff, and I must declare that I am no longer a electrician, commercial or residential, but I have been some time in my life. And here we might have a typical circuit where we have power, which is composed of the line or the above ground conductor, which is often black. It could be red or blue, depending on how you have your house wired and being a, a 120 volt circuit. We have the ground dead conductor, which is the white wire or the neutral. This wire is actually bonded to the ground, but it actually conducts the same amount of electricity going through the device going back through the, the ground dead conductor. So it has current on it. It doesn't necessarily have voltage per se, although there will be a small amount if you're running current because the voltage dropped through the copper wire. But this is ground dead conductor. And I make that distinction because that's different than the grounding conductor. The grounding conductor is your safety ground or your bare wire or your copper. It also might be green. So this one is, is designed to be at ground level, ground potential, no volts, and no current. That's how ground fault works. We sense this wire and we sense anything dribbling out uh, through these two wires that are making it back through to the ground. If it sees any current, it says that there is a ground fault. So this one is the grounding conductor. It grounds the device. The neutral is the ground dead conductor. And I make those distinctions 
for you because if you ever read the code you can get confused on which one is which. So in a typical circuit we might have the power line come through and it goes through some form of a switching all the way to your light, your fixture or whatever and it comes back through the neutral back to the return circuit. Sometimes you'll hear that called a return. This is NMB and NMB is really the more proper term for what most people would call Romex. It's an indoor house wiring designed only for indoor use in dry conditions in wood structure type of buildings because this is a soft kind of a plastic jacket covering the PVC coated individual conductors. Now here we have a big X. I wish I had made it red but it's a big X. We don't do this. This is what we're case studying today. In a home circa 1960, I uh, recently was made aware of a wiring condition where we had power coming in. It dropped into a power box. There was actually a receptacle in here. And then it dropped down into a switch out of the switch over to the light. And in fact, if you switch the light on and off, it would make the light go off and it would do a great job. But this is very dangerous and I believe it has always been illegal uh, or violation of the code to do things this way. And if it may not have been always through the history of the electric code, I don't know, but I was wiring around late 70s and 80s. And uh, at that time we were not allowed to do this because it is a danger. And why is it a danger? Because remember this wire is the neutral or the ground dead conductor is tied at ground level, but it still carries current. Well, what happened in this first scenario, the one that has the X, is the person who wired the circuit brought the power in all the way through, uninterrupted, all the way out to the device. So there was always power whether the light was turned on or not. So one could easily get fooled and think that we had a dead circuit because we disconnected it by the switch and find out that we had 120 volts right there and we had then a path to ground which would be our little human if i drew a little human here he might get a hold of that wire seeing that the light was off when you turn the switch off and think the circuit was dead and that's what's dangerous about it we need to disconnect power it's actually against the code and has been for multiple generations of code that it is illegal to break the neutral but that's what the guy did he took in here and he broke the circuit by taking the white wire, the neutral wire, through a switch. And I actually showed this ground that he actually didn't have the switch grounded. He just had two wires, two neutral wires broken right down. And that would stop the circuit. That would interrupt the circuit. That would turn the light off. But we only broke the ground dead conductor, not the uh, grounding conductor and not the power. So the light would go off, but we were hot at all times. And that could lead to someone getting shocked. We want to always have it switched a different way. So this is straight wrong, right out. And I have a quote for you here in NEC a reference 404.2B, which says you do not break the neutral. You can break the neutral in one condition, which is that you break all of the wires. Now, I don't, you don't break the bond, you don't break the, the ground at all, but you break all wires, all phase wires and, and all ground dead and line wires together. You can break the neutral in that case that you're also breaking the hot wire and that will totally disconnect the light. So that was wrong. That is a wrong way to do it. Now for generations again we've done it. We've kind of pulled the power through the box and we break the black wire or the or the above ground conductor. We could also bring it into a light box and drop this down with a light leg. Now if we drop the light leg or switch leg in this case well, I would often call this the light leg because it's going to the light, and I would call this a switch leg because it's going down to the switch, switch loop. That we represent by this second one, where we actually show these two wire nuts. We would come in and drop down the black wire, and we would run the, the ground wire directly to the switch. We'd take the white wire, take a little marker, marker it black, or put a little stripe around or a little electrical tape to tell us that that white wire is no longer a ground dead conductor that is actually a switch leg and we'd bring the power back up and feed the rest of the circuit and turn the light on. Does that make sense to you? That's a simple way to work it. It kind of represents by this kind of little pictogram over here and this was legal for many 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 years. Now several editions of code ago we changed some of the some of the the exceptions. There's always exceptions to this kind of stuff and we added a requirement that there must be a neutral wire or ground dead conductor in the switch box. 
which is represented by this one right here. Switch boxes must have a neutral wire. This is from the 2023 NEC 404.2C will tell you, you must have a neutral in that box. Now, whether the switch doesn't necessarily need it, but maybe some other device does. As we enter a time of electronic, electronic dimmers and Wi-Fi switches, I have a few smart switches in my house, they need a neutral because we can no longer use just a little few uh, milliamps, a little microamp or so, to go through that ground wire to power the circuit that would look to see if the switch was on or not. It ha it's like Alexa or Hey Google, it has to be alive at all time to listen to tell, for you to tell it to turn on. And that's what it's doing. So we have that action going on at this particular time. And you may not need it but the code currently requires it in almost every situation. There are a slight few exceptions to it, one of which is if you have a retrofit of, say, this situation. If we have this old house wired without a neutral, you are not required to pull a new wire and to put a neutral in the box. Now, this type of switch arrangement will probably not run a smart device in the wall because we cannot pass electricity through that grounding conductor because we would interpret that as a ground fault. Does that make sense to you? So this is the new way that we would do it and I would expect if you have a modern house built in the last 10 years or so that every switch box should have an, a white wire in it even if it's just dead headed off with a wire nut right there. And it's doing the same thing that we sh we did in this situation. We're just bringing the power in, and instead of dropping down this switch and coming out, we would just go straight across, because the switch wouldn't be here, and drop down, hit that switch, come back out of that switch, right, and hit it, the power to the light. The neutral is not needed in this case for just a simple switch, but it's still there. And of course, as always, we have our grounding conductor in our switch box. So that might be useful to you at some point in time. Uh, it, this right here is not the way to do it. Whether it was ever legal, I don't know. As far as I know, it was never legal during the time I was doing any wiring, and it's there for a reason. I want to recap that again, because power comes through uninterrupted all the way to the light. Even though we can break the switch, we can break this on either side and turn the light off because we interrupt the circuit, either on the black or the white. The difference is, it's the white wire, which is at ground is said to be at ground or zero volts but it does carry power so if you're running power uh, out here and making it available to the light if you were to touch this or get a hold of it even though the switch is off you might get yourself a shock when we do it these other ways we break the hot wire and there's not a way to get a shock on the outside if you turn the switch off does that make sense to you okay well let's return to the show and get those numbers and other things out of out of the way. Hello, I'm Del Delbert of Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. If you are currently unrepresented and would like to know how to compare up to three properties side by side and room by room, then go over to my new YouTube channel, Call Dell to Sell. That's one L and Dell, no spaces. Watch the demo on Real Scout, and then call me, and we'll set up your exclusive ad-free account today. Well, I hope that was useful to you. I know it's you don't normally find this with your typical residential real estate and land guy out there, simply because it's a it's an area of knowledge they they have no experience with, and so they they cannot really address it. Now, I can address it with qualifications. I'm no longer a practicing electrician, but homeowners often do some wiring and some work of their own, and it's it is good to start getting some ideas in your head and to get some ideas maybe on some of those older houses, some of the stuff you might run into you can take nothing for granted and again I don't know what all the other 40,000 or however many people we have licensed through in, in the system in Tennessee but I'll bet you not all of them have that same background as as I do and so that's why I appreciate you tuning in for my somewhat unorthodox residential uh, video blog so let's get back to our data from the previous period we recorded which was a skip of the holidays we had 18,000 632 opportunities that includes the coming soons that was down over the previous period 
we had 29.51 in the under contacts still still showing if i can say that if i can get that out and we had a ratio rounded to the integer level of 16 percent between those two those two numbers and that was down over the previous period this week 0106 2023 we have 17,000 13 which is down over the last recorded episode and we have 26 74 in the under contract still showing which is down over the previous recorded period we referred to you and that's also down both of those were down and the integer ratio between the two remained the same at 16 percent and now what does this reflect we are seeing some lower numbers but then again it's in the winter months and we just had the holidays and i'm sure there were some contracts that closed we had several in our office alone that used both bond mortgage and uh, momentum title which kind of makes that facilitation of the closing a little bit easier we had that in there and I, oh by the way if you want to list a house and buy a house if we use if we use uh, momentum title if we got them on both sides of the transaction uh, like say on, on a buy sell where both buyer and seller are agree to that one title company they will split the the cost between the two so you don't get both sides get charged for their attorneys you one attorney handles both sides of it and we can do that there are a lot of little things like that we can always verify for you prior to closing prior to really getting heavy started but you do need to get started because overall we're still going to see increases in the fed target rate which leads to higher prime rates and we just have to be ready for any condition that comes at us and and you know for for forewarned is forearmed so that's why i try to bring you this what some people say you know you're not always mr happy salesman that's because i'm not a salesman i'm a real estate professional and you know what you need to do you need to call dale to sell call dale to buy call me and uh we'll do something we'll get something going even if even if you're not ready today to buy a house or sell your house we can get started for the future time when it's best for you thank you for watching and i hope you have a good 2023